All right. So it actually opened uh, down further. So we would have gotten in right here around the open of this price bar. Um, then we could have had in our stop loss from 30 back of the uh, order that we fill. So we could say that we're going to place in a stop loss right here. And now we're in the market to go long. And we are waiting for... Do, do, do. I'm even color coordinating my arrows today. Um, so we'd actually be waiting for uh, the market to move forward a set amount before we'd actually move our stop at all. So the stop would stay right here. Let's take a look at what the parameters would be for sitting in like that trailing stop. Say we're back at this time and we had placed in an order. Um, say we had used a, let's see, I need to move my market back forward. Do, do, do. All right, we were back in time, we were over here, and we had placed an order, and we had placed in an order to go long with a stop loss that we set 30 ticks back, right? Because that's what I set it for right in here. And then we also put in an option for a jump stop. We could have said that, you know what, we are going to leave my stop 30 ticks back until, um, let's see. until the market moves at least, uh, let's say, 30 ticks forward. I want the market to move 30 ticks my direction, and once it does that, once it's got a healthy move forward, let's go ahead and move that stop. Instead of keeping it 30 ticks away from my initial entry price, let's move it uh, 10 ticks away from where I initially entered in. So once the market moves 30 ticks forward, I'm actually going to move my stop loss forward to just 10 ticks away from the fill price. So I actually would be moving that uh, stop order forward 20 ticks. Okay? Um, and then at that point, it would just do nothing. It would just stop. Unless, then I also came in and said, once we've done that initial jump, let's do a jump trail. And let's say that, all right, and if the market moves again, let's say, let's say something smaller like 10 ticks, my direction, go ahead and move another five, okay? And this means that every single time the market moves another 10 ticks my direction, go ahead and move my stop loss five more uh, into the profit, all right? It's gonna continue to move forward. So if I had this set up, okay, we're, we're doing a little bit of imagining right now because we're not back at that point, but remember, we had an initial jump of minus 10 from uh, my fill price if it moves 30, and then every time it moves another 10, move another five. All right, so we were back here we filled at this open of this price bar. We've got a stop, jump stop, waiting right back here. I'm going to go ahead and move my dollar calculator up as a quick little reference. And let's go ahead and step the chart forward. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and move this back. All right, so we moved the chart forward a couple price bars. We can see that we have this bar right here, and it moves 30 ticks up, and it closes as well. Immediately at that point, our jump stop is going to, as you remember, jump up to just ten dollars, or excuse me, ten ticks away from our initial fill price. So that means that our stop loss would jump up to ten away from our filled price. And remember this green bar right here, I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger for you. This is where our long order was. And I'm even gonna make this a little bigger for you as well. This red line is gonna uh, represent what our stop loss is at. Now we've had the market move 30 ticks our direction. And so now at this point, it's actually going to stay right here. Now, from there, we also told it that if we move an additional 10 ticks, I'm going to make ticks my default, okay? We also told that if it moves another 10 ticks, go ahead and move my order forward five more, okay? Uh, so at this point, let's go ahead and step forward. And that came pretty close, but not all the way. Drops back down. I'm going to go ahead and start moving these price bars forward. Came close there, but not high enough. And remember, my stop loss is down there. It's there to protect me. All right, and then we get this guy right here. This price bar jumps forward a healthy amount, actually. Um, at this point, we're actually going to jump forward. It looks like if we move this over. Okay. In this one bar, we actually are going to be jumping forward one five forward, and then it looks like another five again forward. So now 
we're officially at break even. Our stop or stop loss is at the exact same price as the entry order that we filled. Uh, we step forward again. Okay, we get this price bar. Looks like it moves up in about another ten. And again, we move forward five. Now, what makes this nice, or nicer, uh, in my opinion, than um, a regular dollar back trail, is that it's going, or even a price bars back trail, is that it's going to wait until the market makes new highs. It's not going to trail unless the market keeps on going our direction. So it's going to keep on moving forward if the market retraces and starts coming back like it would right here and here and here, it would have moved up on this price bar, but when the market starts retracing, it's just going to hold its position. So over the course of these several price bars, it wouldn't have moved at all. Okay? If you're using a price bar's back trail that just follows on the lowest point of 10 price bars back, and you get a long stretch of sliding bars moving sideways like this, your trailing stop will keep jumping up with it. Keep on moving closer, even though you can see it's just a retracement. Don't, you wouldn't move the stop forward. If you were sitting there watching it, um, you would leave it there and you'd wait. Um, but it keeps on moving and moving forward. So these jump uh, stop trails, they're really nice for that because it's going to wait until it makes a new high, then it will move it again. Um, so really, I actually recommend taking a look at those jump trails because they do um, have a lot of benefits there. And you also have, um, you have plenty of options for going through and also um, setting up different styles as well. Uh, this stop they were doing was lagging behind the market, right? If you recall, I had placed in a trade, and I had set 30 ticks back for my initial placement. My jump trail is saying that if it moved 30 ticks, my direction moved just to 10 away. And then my trail, jump trail, was saying that every time it moved 10, move forward 5, which means that every single time the market moves 10 more in my direction, I'm only gaining 5 more uh, ticks. It means that I'm going to give myself a lot more breathing room, which isn't bad. But at the same time, you're going to have a stop loss that gets progressively further and further away from the market. Okay. Um, so for this reason, it may not be what you actually want to use. Um, you may want to use something that's uh, actually more aggressive. Um, something like, say, if the market moves forward 15 ticks. No, let's say if the market moves forward. No. I'm looking at this trend side, what I would want to do. Let's say if the market moves forward 10 ticks, we will jump our stop loss 11 ticks. Okay? Just an extra tick, every single time the market moves 10 ticks my direction, I'm going to move my stop loss 11 ticks forward, which means I'm going to progressively take one extra tick every single time. Um, so you're actually going to have your stop loss moving a little bit faster than the market, which means that every single time it moves up 10, you move up 1, and you're actually going to be progressively gaining a tick every time you move forward. Um, if you do something a little bit more robust, say that you say that uh, every time it moves 10 ticks, move 15. That means you'll be gaining 5 ticks every single time that the market moves forward 10 on your stop loss. So you're going to be taking a more profit every jump, but then again, you have more chance of getting uh, stopped out on a retracement. And also, interestingly enough, you're actually going to be capping the number of jump trails you're going to do. Um, because at some point, you're going to catch up to the market. If you're moving your stop more ticks than the market's even moving, um, so every time it moves 10, you move 15, which means you're gaining five ticks every single jump, at some point, you're going to hit the market. Um, and how long that takes is actually going to be completely dependent on how far apart you set your initial jump stop. Okay? Uh, if you remember, I said if the market moves 30, move this up to minus 10. That means that the distance between my stop loss and the current market price would have been 40 ticks, right? I was 10 below my entry price. The market was 30 ticks profitable on my entry, so 40 ticks total. And if I'm gaining 5 ticks every single time that the market moves another 10, that means that after 5 ticks into 40, you're going to be capping out the number of jumps you'll do at 8, okay? So as soon as you have 8 jumps with this, at that point, you would have landed right on top of the market because you were progressively gaining on it, and then you would have been stopped out. Okay? Um, the, the option for doing this, it's kind of nice, actually, but it can cut you out early on uh, moves, so it's kind of a give and take there. Um, something with a um, accelerated jump stop can be really nice if you have something short-lived like this signal back here. You know, you got the signal to go short. It starts chugging along going down. Um, so for something that doesn't last very long, that's actually kind of nice. You end up closing out, taking your profit pretty quickly, and then you wait for your next signal. Uh, same could apply for this guy right here. 
uh, where we actually end up getting in right here, we would want to get closed out up above or at least hope for a break uh, out at even for that trade. So accelerated work really great. Um, so I guess it really depends on how often you're getting in and out. If you're holding, buying and holding for quite a long time, you'd probably want to do a jump that lags behind a little bit or falls exactly. Um, but that one would be up to you there. Anywho, all right. I think that's all I'm going to be doing for you today. I've got to get back to my uh, to my tech support and all of that over here at uh, Track and Trade. Um, if you have any questions, I'll go ahead and write those in uh, here real quick. And if you ever have anything you want to know more about from me, go ahead and just give me a call or let us know. Talk to Paul, um, and you're going to be set up pretty nicely there as well. So, anyways, I hope you really enjoyed the class today. Uh, I jump around a little bit. I said I was going to talk mostly about uh, trailing stops and adjusting indicators, and in the end I'm talking about jump stops and placing in trades because uh, it's just more entertaining that way. I hope you had fun. I'll see you all again next time. And, as always, best of trades, everyone.